Jeez, I had another nightmare. What about? <laughs> Vince McMahon. Right, that, I, to I told you. Any more wrestling dreams and I'm out of here. I am totally done. Oh, just great. Thanks a lot, Vince. You just caused me my relationship. I mean, unbelievable. But did this surprise anyone or will it surprise anyone? Probably not. I mean, ever since Triple H took over creative duties at WWE, I'm pretty sure he was aware. Because anytime somebody walked up to him and said, oh, hello, Paul Levesque, what's going on with Vinnie Mac? He'd be like, hey, will I still talk to my father-in-law? He has a bit of input, but I am the captain of the ship. I mean, he wasn't saying that for our health. If you didn't want to bill it as the game's worst nightmare, though, I totally get it. And it was hidden in plain sight. Why? Here's why. Now, I suppose given that I do think Triple H would have known about all of this, it's not too big of a surprise for him, but just put yourself inside his brain for a minute. Wait a second. Right, here we are, inside Triple H's brain. But all of a sudden, you have been given the keys to the castle. You have been given all the freedom. Even if you kind of are looking over your shoulder and you're a little bit worried about the old man returning, you would still be feeling so damn warm and fuzzy in your tum-tum because finally you've got to the top, which you were working for 20 years. I mean, it's like when you're having an impending deadline. You're enjoying the work, and you're like, oh man, I'm having such a great time. But you've got that weight on the shoulder, because you know someone's watching. For those that don't know too, even after Vince's retirement, he was still the majority stakeholder. And as we've already talked about, yes, he is Triple H's father-in-law, because Hunter Hearst Helmsley is married to Stephanie McMahon. Poof, don't even get me started on that stuff. Remember what we did with Stephanie? We put her in a hand and went poo and we flicked her away. So there's no way that all these people stopped chatting, so I'm sure at some point Trips was like, all right, well, I understand I've only got a few months to do this, but let me do the best possible job and essentially went over the WWE universe. He did that as well because he sorted out his stable and he just tried to balance it as best as he can which is what I guess he's still trying to do. But yeah, McMahon has a smoking gun. And he's ready to fire it. Doesn't make any sense because if it's smoking, you've already pulled the trigger. And do not pretend otherwise. This was always going to go down because those rumors never went away. And if you go back to 2022, when all of a sudden Vincent Kennedy McMahon was basically back on the board, it was just a matter of time. We knew we were going to get to the Royal Rumble. We knew we were going to get to WrestleMania. And then we got to that roar after the show of shows. And scripts were being ripped up. It's like we'd gone back in time. It also kind of means that Vince spent that entire summer when he did go quiet planning all of this. And he must have been planning the merger between WWE, UFC and Endeavor. When you let that one go through your head, he's a little bit of a crazy person. Obviously, there is a moral argument here, given the reason why McMahon had to step away. And we'll absolutely do a video about that one day. But now that we have arrived in this stupid place, I suppose we just need to deal with it as best as we possibly can. Because nobody is going to be able to overrule Vince if he doesn't want to be overruled. But let's just check out those Raw and Smackdowns we were just referring to. Because actually, you do get the good and you do get the bad. And we don't know for sure, of course, because it's always rumours. But it does sound like McMahon was at that Raw. It does sound like he made a bunch of changes, which is why a lot was weird. But then when we got to Friday, he wasn't around and Smackin' Down was pretty good. And then when we got to the following Monday night, once again, he made changes remotely. I actually thought that was a decent show too, which was especially impressive because half the roster couldn't get there because of travel problems. I do want to say the most frustrating thing about changing things at the last minute when there's no need to is even if you do have this moment of genius, you're like, oh my gosh, I've just come up with the best wrestling story ever. You don't have to implement it right there and now. You can cross your arms and you can practice patience and figure out the best time to drop it. That's why when something is in place, we should just keep the structure to it because so far, I haven't seen one work the other way. Once we had got past that, though, it did feel like we were going back to our narratives, especially when it came to the bloodline. Because Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, they were mad at the Usos and Matt Riddle returned. And he was mad at Sola Sokoa because he had tried to kill him. Now, we need to see what's going to happen with Roman Reigns because he hasn't been spotted since April the 2nd. But when he comes back too, I can't lie, I'm hopeful. So maybe this actually was just a power play by McMahon to remind everyone, hey, don't forget who does sit at the top of this tree. And now he's just going to chill out a little bit. And look, I know that's looking on the positive side of life, but why be a negative Nancy? 
Wrestling there is entertainers. So let's drink the joy. And I do think I'm kidding myself a lot there, but don't forget the light at the end of the tunnel. Triple H still does have a creative say, and one day he will assume this position properly, and now he's got a bunch of evidence to prove <laughs> I know what I'm doing. And it's not perfect, of course, and it does seem very much so like Roman Reigns will continue to be his guy, but if he keeps giving me long-term storytelling and he eventually pays all those stories off, look at me. I'm leaning back just chilling out on a beach right now because that's all I need from my sports entertainment. Let's get back up right. As a quick aside as well, because we have arrived here, I think it's hilarious that some people look at Triple H, the proverbial hill back in the day, and can't believe that he would book at the head of the table to win at WrestleMania. Go back to WrestleMania 2000, or WrestleMania 15 as it should be called. Who walked away with that as the WWF champion? That's right, it was the King of Kings, it was the game, and he was the first villain to do this. So yeah, I totally believe he would be like, ha, ha, I know what we can do. Roman can be the champ forevermore. I mean, maybe I'll be dead before he loses the belts. Then I'll definitely be sad because I still want Cody to win it. Again though, if he has booked out the entire year, which we keep talking about, don't worry about me and don't worry about anyone. Trust your guts, not literally and go and make it work. This is the main reason I worry about Vince McMahon overruling all of this, because all of a sudden it's gonna become so fuddy-duddy and muddy again, and I'll be making notes for ups and downs going, no, nope, I don't understand that. Where did that storyline go? Oh, we gave this person a push for three weeks and then somebody got bored. I mean, look, there were still good elements of that era of WWE, but it really, really did well, serve its purpose by the end of it. I mean, do not forget the tagline of WrestleMania 39 was finish the story. And while personally, I do think we should have done it there. As long as we finish it eventually, everything will be okay. But imagine we don't. <laughs> imagine it never ends. I want to start talking about death again. There is a good spin to this because Triple H would have been ahead of the game. And yes, that is a pun. And I'm sure he has gone, hmm, how do I sort this? I mean, if nothing else, the company is in a state of flux at the moment because they were just bought and they may be having a hiring freeze, or maybe they're not having a hiring freeze. The wrestling news can't make up their mind, but obviously the people at the top are gonna be worried about money. If you've just dropped that much cash, you ain't gonna spend any more. You want a return on the investment. So we are essentially in uncharted waters because we've never seen the World Wrestling Federation or World Wrestling Entertainment owned by somebody that's not called Vince McMahon. And yet now, that is the case. I don't think we can just start shooting off here and guessing what the future holds. I don't think anybody knows, not even Vince. So it is kind of mad when you think about it, but it goes back to what we talked about earlier. It means we can practice patience. That's me doing it and just wait and see. It is scary though. I do get it. I agree. I don't think I can handle if the 24 seven title comes back again, because <laughs> man, that was so off the rails by the end of it. But look, at least you'll know as soon as all that Flanagan stuff does return, well, maybe we're going on a ship to a place we don't want to go. Now, please do leave a comment below and let me know what you think about this. Now, I know the majority aren't going to be pleased that Vince McMahon is coming back from a professional and personal point of view. And once again, I understand. But let's put ourselves in Triple H's shoes, maybe even literally, if your name is Paul Levesque. Imagine you were he. How would you deal with this? That's the kind of stuff I want to know. Then you can like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Check out whatculture.com where you can read more articles like this, and you can keep up to date with wrestling. And look, there's videos all over the screen, and I implore you, kick one, and I implore you, come follow us at WhatCultureWWE, Simon Miller 316 because there you can yell at us specifically and directly. I don't know why I keep giving this information out. Otherwise, my name is Simon Miller from What Culture. Thank you for joining me as always, especially for the Why series, because this is when we get into the nitty gritty and we start to editorialize wrestling. And also, look, thank you so much to the people that do call me a wrestling journalist. I ain't no wrestling journalist. At best, I'm a professional idiot or just a bald guy that somehow is allowed to rant and rave about pro wrestling. And I agree with you. I don't know why I've been given this power either, but now I've got it and I'll never let it go for anyone, cause screw He-Man, I am Skeletor. What? See you soon.